Here we go. 3.5 probabilities using combinations. You can sometimes use combinations or Pascal's triangle to determine probabilities. The numerator, n at a, represents the number of successful outcomes, usually involving restrictions. The denominator, n at s, represents the total number of outcomes with no restrictions. So n at a over n at s is equal to the number of successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So what we do here is we're looking at examples to solve the problem. To win the grand prize in a fundraising draw, you need to match s numbers from 1 to 27 without regard to order. Part A. What is the percent chance of winning the grand prize? Part B. What is the percent chance of winning second prize, which involves matching six of the win seven winning numbers? So in Part A, we want to win the grand prize. The probability of winning the grand prize is you have one possible answer over 27 choose 7. So over the 27 numbers we can choose any 7 numbers. But your chance of getting that grand prize is if the right combination that you've picked is chosen. So that's 1 over 27 choose 7. And that gives you 1 over 888030. And we calculate that as a percent folks. When we cal write the calculator number down just use the entire calculator number. Now, part B is, what is the percent chance of winning second prize, which involves matching six of the seven winning numbers? To win second, that means that you would have to actually have, from the seven winning numbers, we're gonna cho we've chosen six of them, and we have one extra number from the remaining 20 that are left over. So seven choose six times 20 choose one over 27 choose 7. Once we calculate all of this, I want you to understand now how the 1 came about. That came about by saying we have 7 numbers, we choose the 7 numbers we want, and from the remaining 20 we choose 0. That's where the 1 came from in the previous question. Back to part B. Part B now says the probability of getting the second prize is 7 choose 6 times 20 choose 1 over 27 choose 7. And again, we calculate the percentage, folks, and we use the full number that's in the calculator. When we calculate the percentage, don't forget that you're actually multiplying by 100. So this number has already been multiplied by 100. All right, next part. Part C. What is the probability of not winning first or second prize? Part D, comment how difficult it is to win the lot win lottery prizes. So what's the probability of not winning first or second prize? Hopefully you're thinking, oh, that's the indirect method, and that's right. The probability of not getting first or second is taking 100% minus first place and minus second place, and so that will give us 887 over 889, oh, sorry, 887889 over 888030, which is equal to literally almost 100%, folks. You're most likely not to win the lottery. Again, it's drawn by luck, not necessarily uh, by skill. Now, how many, how, comment on how difficult it is to win lottery prizes, folks, to be able to pick those seven numbers. It's one, the correct sorry, the correct six numbers, I believe it is, seven numbers, correct seven numbers, you have an eight, there are 888,030 ways to pick seven numbers. Only one of them would be the right answer. Now, so you're probably getting not getting first or second. You're most likely not to get set, uh, first or second based on that percentages. Okay, moving on. Open-ended answers, folks, it's really entirely up to you. Next part, example two. A teacher was uses a rent. Now, this is a lot of information, folks, so I'm just going to take this back a second so that you have the information you need. There we go. A teacher uses a random name gener generator to select six students to present their projects. In a class of 23 students, 12 are male and 11 are female. What is the probability that an equal number of male and female students will present? 
Part B, what is the probability that more female than male students will present? Well, the easiest part is finding the number of po possible ways in total that can be chosen. So 23 choose 6. We're taking 23 students, we're choosing 6. Now, in order to get male equal female, we want to have, all right, from the 12 male, we're choosing 3 of them, and we multiply it by 11 choose 3. Okay, 11 choose 3 is the 11 females, and we need to choose 3. Sorry about the back and forth, folks. Okay, now we need to calculate the probability. So we take n at a, divide by n at s, and that gives us 35.9595%. Now, the next part. We want to look at the question that says, what is the probability that more female than male students will present? Well, the probability here is female greater than male. So n at the number of female greater than male is equal to 12 male choose 2 times 11 female choose 4 plus so more that more females than males so that means more females than males means that there has to be four females five females six females so we did four just now and now we do the males which is 12 choose 1 times 11 choose 5 because remember we're dealing with the five females now and then plus the six females so from 12 boys we choose nothing times six, uh, sorry, 11, choose all six that we're looking for. We plug that in our calculator, and we get an answer of probability of female greater than male is going to be the two, tw sorry, 27.5253 percent. Which one of these are you more likely to do it knowing these odds? That's right. The, because of that, you know that there's going to be more likely they're going to be balanced than imbalanced. Well, that tells you something about which one is more likely. So back again to this one. Looking at this, it is more likely, sorry, more likely to have an equal number of male and female rather than more females than male students based on the percentages. So you're more likely to have a balance of both of these. Okay. Next, we've already dealt with the outcomes. Let's do one more. In the game of Plinko, a disc is dropped into a slot at the top of the board. When it hits a peg, it falls to the left or right as it travels down the board. State the probability of the disc ending up in each slot at the bottom of the board. So, I want you to understand what this ball is going to do. The ball is here in white. This ball is going to fall down hit this, have chances to go on either side, and continue down. So it's almost like the idea that as soon as it hits something, it's like it's the top of Pascal's triangle. There's one way it can hit that coming from the top. Then, as it moves in either direction, it can move one or one. Then it moves again, one, two, one. And then it moves again, one, Three, three, one. What happens to A and F? A and F both get a zero because it's not likely that the Plinko ball is going to go on either end. All right. Now, what's the probability of the disc ending up in each slot at the bottom of the board? Well, the probability of getting A is equal to probably getting F, and that equals zero out of a total of eight possible ways. Now, the probability of getting B or probably in E is equal to 1 in 8. The probability of C and D is equal to 3 in 8. So these are the different probabilities of all the letters at the bottom of the board. Okay, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.